around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> you can do while I'm gone, if you will. Yes, sir. What's that? That door out back been off the hinges two winters now. Oh. It should be awful nice to have it fixed, wouldn't it? Well, it's, it's awful hot for that kind of work. Yeah, too done. hot in the summer, too cold in the winter, huh? I'll fix it, Mr. Jones. Good, Chester. And you might clean up our back a little, too. Those cells look like we've been boarding cattle out there, not men. Yes, sir. Well, I'll see you in a couple of days. Bye, Mr. Jones. Have a nice trip. Sometimes I think I might maybe just go to San Francisco and get me a job being a rich millionaire gold digger. Live at a nice big hotel. Not never wash up nothing, never. Never do nothing at all except drive around in a fancy rig and have people say, Good morning, Mr. Proud Hello, Doc. Yeah, I saw Matt riding out a minute ago. Yeah, he's went. Where's he headed for? He went out into the country. Won't be back for a day or so. We left you here alone, huh? Well, now it kind of looks that way, don't it? Must be an important mission. Well, he probably wants to travel alone, fast and light. That ain't it at all. He would have took me. He wants me to stay here and kind of keep an eye on things. Oh, you mean he wants uh, to know how many killings took place? And how many times the bank was held up, huh? Things like that? No, I ain't quite as useless as you seem to think. I know, I know. I got more to do than ride around all over the country in an old buggy handing out sugar pills to defenseless old ladies or just walking up and down the plaza looking for somebody to gossip with. I don't need some old sawbones to tell me what good I am or not. The cook at Delmonico's told me they've got antelope stew today. I don't care what the... Antelope stew? I was kind of looking for someone to eat with. Antelope stew? Are you hungry by any chance? Come on, Doc. If we don't hurry, it'll be all gone. <laughs> You don't want some more, Stu. Well, then, no, thank you, Doc. I just couldn't. <laughs> Can't fly on one wing, you know. Well, maybe you're right. Who uh, not just a little dab more, please? Yeah, all right, just sure. There you are. Thank you. Uh, Doc, you know that fellow just come in? Uh, no, why? Uh, well, he sure looking at you funny. He's coming over here. I'm Bryce Harp, Judge. What? I said my name's Bryce Harp. You remember me. Well, no, I'm sorry, I don't. 
You got a convenient memory, Judge. Judge? What's this judge business? He ain't no judge, mister. A whole lot more likely he'd be on the other side of the bench. Good luck, I run in. Now, wait on a minute, sir. I'm a doctor. I'm not a judge. What? A doctor, I said. Oh, he's a doctor, sure enough, mister. And if there's something wrong with your horse, he can prove oh, it. Oh, shut up, Jeffrey. <laughs> so that's it. You're hiding out. Now, now wait a minute. Now, what in the world are you talking about? Judge Kennebrew. Big man in Wyoming. Horse doctor in Kansas. What happened, Judge? They tell you I was getting out? Uh, <clears throat> I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about, my friend. I'm talking about seven years in state prison. Seven long years you sentenced me to, Judge. Seven years to think about what I'd do when I got out. I tell you, I'm not a judge, you fool. You're right in my bill, tell you. Just, I'm Doc Adams. Judge, I don't care what you call yourself or what you claim to be. I've been waiting seven years to meet up with you again. And it ain't likely you nor anybody else can talk me out of killing you. Uh, killing you? That's all I've been waiting for, Judge. And I don't much care how I catch you either. Now, look here, you... You can't go around threatening people like that. Don't tell me what I can do. I've had seven years of people telling me what I can oh, do. Oh, you're crazy. You're drunk. Well, I'll see you later, Judge. I'll be doggone. Well, I've been called a lot of things in my life, but never a judge. He said he was going to kill you, dog. Oh, it mistook me for someone else. Judge someone or other. You'll find out the truth soon enough. Oh, yeah, but he thinks you're just covering up with this doctor business. No, I don't think there's so much to worry about, Chester. This Bryce Harp is just another pilgrim gone off balance with a hard life out here. He was mighty pale for a prairie man, Doc. Hey, prison power? Oh, no. Doc, no, I don't think you should ought to take this so light. Maybe seriouser than you think. Now, Chester, I know a thing or two about people. Harp's just a little off balance. I probably won't remember a thing about this by nightfall. Yeah. Maybe, but I ain't so sure. Oh, now, look. He wasn't wearing a gun, was he? Well, no. Come to think of it, he wasn't. Yeah, hey, you see? The man comes busting in here saying he's going to kill me. He's making threats and he isn't even armed. Now, just stop threatening. Eat your stew. Go ahead. Uh, okay, Doc. Yes, you know. But I don't mind telling you I sure will be easier when he leaves town. Or if Mr. Dillon gets back. Why, rather? Doc is a judge. <laughs> I sure would hate to talk before him if he was. If he got through chewing on you, there wouldn't be enough left to send to jail. Oh, no, he's not that bad. You don't know him like I do. <laughs> Give me a beer, Barkey. Hmm? That's him. That, that, that's my right heart right there. Well, he doesn't look like any tiger to me. Maybe not. But he's still kind of hard to figure out. Hey, you need that whole bar to drink that miserable glass of beer? Uh, you need the whole saloon to show off in. Huh? What's that? You heard me, mister. I don't believe it. You just ain't got no blood in you to stand there and talk like that. You're wearing a gun. And I'm going to use it to split your head in two. Pull it right there. Oh. Did you see that? You said he didn't have a gun. Then you take it easy, mister. Get out of here. Fast. Sure. 
Connie spread the word around that you were taking the early stage to St. Louis. St. Louis? But, but Harp thinks you're up here packing, right? Oh, but that's... Oh, fine. Yeah, that's just fine. If Harp really is serious about killing me, you set me up like a bird in a turkey shoot. Yeah, yeah I, I guess I have it done. Well, what would you want to tell him a fool thing like that for? Because I figure if he's going to try to kill you, it's better to know when and where he's going to try it. It's a lot better than just sitting around waiting for him to shoot you in the back. Oh, so she'll know for sure you're up here and moving around. I'm just trying to make sure that I get my head blown off, aren't you? If Doc Green can try to shoot you from down there in the street, it'd be too easy to miss. Oh, that's a fine theory. Uh, is your front door still locked? Yeah, yes, it is. And give me the key. What? Huh? Give me the key. Oh, God, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, why did you unlock it? How in the world is Hart going to get in here if the door is locked? If he comes in that door, we're just as good as dead. We're right on the line of fire. Of course we are, Doc, but so is he. You better get yourself a comfortable seat. We may have us a long way. Now, wait, what are you doing? Why did you blow off that lamp? So with a lamp out, you may think you've went to bed. Then we may not have such a long way. I hope you know what you're doing, Chester. So do I, Doc. So do I. Well, I go. Oh, uh, I guess all we can do now is just wait. Yeah. Coming back till tomorrow. I ran into Jake Worth at the Benson place. Saved me a day's ride. You were close for the night? Oh, yeah. But we can always find a drink for a good customer. <laughs> it helps cut the dust, all right. Beer with whiskey. Uh, well, coffee, I think. We got some. Bring it over the table, will you, Sam? You're sure, Miss Kitty. Ah. <laughs> you look tired. Bad day? Well, as usual. <laughs> Think about how rich you're getting. No, sure. Yeah. There you are, Marshal. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, it's hot. Now, did you stop by the office? No, I just rode in. Why? And you didn't see Chester? No. Why, is something wrong? Well, Chester's got in his mind that some fellow's going to try to kill Doc. Kill Doc? Yeah. Well, what fellow? I don't know. I mean, just rode into town. Well, have you seen him? Yeah, he was in here earlier this evening before we closed up. I'll say one thing. He's handy with a gun. Well, so are half the cowboys in Dodge. Well, yeah. You know, Chester, Kitty, you get the feeling there's responsibility if I'm away. He sees something suspicious in every shadow. Well, that may be, but as I get the story, this man thinks Doc is some judge up in Wyoming who put him in prison, and he's going to kill him. Well, uh, where's Chester now? I haven't seen him in a couple of hours. Kenny, this man that's after Doc, do you know his name? Hart, just as said it was. Bryce Hart. Bryce Hart. Uh, uh, Kenny, I'll see you later. Is Hart still down there, Chester? Yep. Just standing there. Wonder how long he's going to... Doc... What? He's coming. He's starting for the stairs. Just sit tight now and don't make a sound. No, no, I trust her. Are you sure? He'll be there in a Looks 
you got to listen with ain't nothing you better see him drop it. Well, he, he's still alive. Just barely. Help me get him up there on the table, will you? other bullet. Here. It's still there, and it's got to come out. What do you think? Well, I don't know, Chester. It's too soon to know just how bad off he is. You know, it don't give you a very good feeling to shoot a man, even a bad man. Well, he may be all right. Gangrene doesn't set him. Hey, what's happened? Oh, 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 oh. So this fella came up here to take a shot at me, Matt, and just to put a couple of bullets in him. I heard the shooting from the other end of town. It sounded like somebody was fighting the Battle of Chickamauga Creek all over again. Oh, Chester got nicked in the bargain. You all right, Chester? Yes, sir. I can tell you one thing, Matt. I'm mighty glad you got back. I, I swear I've aged a year since yesterday. Well, from the looks of things, you two got along pretty well without me. Well, it's a terrible thing, man. A man getting shot up like that. I wouldn't feel too sorry for Bryce Harp, Doc. Well, you know him? If Chester hadn't stopped him, Harp might have killed you. Well, who is he, Mr. Jones? I've never seen him before, but I know his reputation. And I've seen his picture. He killed three men in a gunfight in Wyoming. He got off with ten years and broke out after seven of them. Killed two guards. Well, this not more I can do here. I think I'll go on home. Yeah, you do that. I'll go on too, Doc. Yeah, I've got work to do. You two go on. Get out of here. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, Doc. Oh, Chester. Yeah? Yeah, Doc? I want to... And I just want to... Well, thanks. Sure. All right, Doc. stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston and adapted by Mr. McDonald. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell and James Mother. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke. <laughs>